What's the word, y'all? Today we reacting to some more Bleach Report articles. We brought it back last week and y'all really enjoyed it. So today is another day. We got Greg Schwartz here with grading every NBA team's offseason. Offseason is pretty much over. Just got some more reports this morning about Ben Simmons, potentially about some Paul Millsap. But for the most part, the offseason is over. We, we know a lot of the teams already got their team constructed. And uh, I'm ready to see what they grade every team. Because I, I think some... Teams had some polarizing off seasons, that's for sure. So we'll see what Greg believes. I would love to see one of these type of articles where it's not just one person, but it's like Greg. It's also um, like all the other writers. They just put a grade down, then they do like an average grade of the entire staff, and then they talk about it. But that, that's just me. I think this one is only Greg. Russell Westbrook as the cover boy because he's probably the biggest name moved this off season. First team, Atlanta Hawks, A minus. Completely makes sense. They brought back Trey Young on an amazing deal. They also brought back um, they brought back John Collins on a deal that I thought was favorable. He wanted a max. They didn't have to give him a max. Five years, 125. Um, it's pretty solid for him. He showed how amazing he can be in the playoffs. They kept their core intact, and I think there's still rumors that they're talking to Kevin Herter's camp, trying to get him um, extended up. So they're dedicated to um, they're dedicated to this core. Um, uh, Sharif Cooper was really solid in the summer league and see if he can get some real backup point guard minutes this year. Overall, pretty solid offseason. Solomon Hill is back too, which is a W. Next, Boston Celtics. I, I saw a lot of people really upset with the Boston Celtics offseason. I didn't think it was that bad. Um, yeah, you didn't go out and get a superstar player, but I didn't think there was a lot that can be uh, done for you guys, honestly. The Dennis Schroeder signing is really solid. I know Dennis Schroeder is the butt of a lot of memes. Like, I'm included in making Dennis Schroeder memes. But Dennis Schroeder is still a really solid player. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he turned down 480 plus or whatever it was. But for you to get him on a one-year deal worth, what, $5 million, million, however long it is or however much it is, is really good. Uh, Josh Richardson's um, addition is solid. I just don't like the idea. The only thing I would say, I don't like the idea of extending the guy before seeing what he's going to look like, especially since Josh Richardson hasn't looked amazing since he left Miami. Um, Al Horford, cool. He's a he's a Boston-type guy. Um, contract is still big, but w what are you going to do about it? They lost Evan Fournier, traded Tristan Thompson. I don't think this is a terrible offseason. I think B-minus fits pretty solidly. Next, Brooklyn Nets. I low-key would give the Brooklyn Nets maybe a little bit higher than a B-plus. Obviously, you got Kevin Durant extended, and that was one of the biggest question marks. How long would his core be together? Seemed like pretty pretty long. Because um, they're already talking to Kyrie and James Harden about an extension too. They lost Mr. Dinwiddie, which was a negative because he didn't play last season anyway. Uh, Jeff Green might hurt a little bit, but they brought back James Johnson, who could probably do similar things. Landry Shemin was a good shooter for them, but they brought in Javon Carter for some perimeter defense. And also, his rookie season at least, he was a really solid shooter. Um, it's yet to be seen if he could continue that. Patty Mills, one of the best backup point guards in recent history. Um, um, they brought in Cam Johnson, who was lighting it up. Blake Griffin is back on a deal that I don't even know the, I don't even know the specifics about. Was it a minimum? It might have been a minimum. And if you're getting Blake back for that low, Bruce Brown back for a low contract, I think they've won the offseason, obviously, um, with health. James Harden even said to him, said it in the interview or whatever. Healthy James Harden is a scary sight, and that's facts for the league. Charlotte Hornets. It's so far, I love everybody's offseason. Kelly Oubre sign is really solid. I doubt that he's going to start this year the way he started last year where he couldn't hit a shot. Um, Mason Plumley, I see him as a stopgap center. Pretty solid, but I don't think he's the center of the future. I don't think he's a center for LaMelo. Um, I think he's a good overall center to help them right now. He's a, he's a slight upgrade from Cody Zeller, and that's all that really matters. Is Smith is a, a good backup. Uh, James Booknight was solid. Kai Jones is a live threat. You brought back Terry Rozier on a contract that is really solid. You lost Vontae, who at this point you didn't really need. Malik Monk, you didn't really need. I like their offseason. Next, A- minus seems about right. Chicago Bulls, B. Polarizing offseason, I completely understand it. Um, a lot of people at Bleach Report specifically think that um, DeMar DeRozan was overpaid, whatever. Um, I think that they got better. <laughs> at the end of the day, that's all that really, really matters to me. Um, I would probably put it in the B-plus range, but it is what it is. We've talked a lot about the Bulls. I don't need to do it again um, today. Next, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers C-minus. And if you watched my video from a couple days ago, we were talking about the Cavs' Larry marketing deal. I think I gave it a C or C-minus. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for them to do the same thing. I think the Evan Mobley is going to be a stud. So, you know, that alone makes it maybe a little bit higher for me. But I don't understand the Larry marketing thing. Um, I think it came out that Larry Nance wanted to play for a contender. So they sent them to Portland. He's playing for a playoff team. That's all that matters. They just have a log jam at that front front court position. And then Kevin Love say, I ain't taking no, no buy y'all, brother. You go pay me all these monies. Um, but I do think Ricky Rubio was a solid pickup for them as far as backup point guards go. Next, 
I can see this from Dallas. I, I know a lot of Dallas Mavericks fans saw what happened in the postseason for them. It was like, bro, we need a second guy. It can be Luka, 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 and sometimes a little bit of a sprinkle in a Porzingis. And they didn't necessarily do that, but they got a guy, Reggie Bullock, who's been a great three-point shooter his whole career. They got a guy like Sterling Brown, who I don't know how many minutes Sterling Brown's going to get, but if he gets 10 minutes, he's going to be solid in those 10 minutes. Moses Brown is another big player. I understand a C plus because they didn't get the secondary dude that a lot of fans wanted them to do get. Um, it just wasn't really out there for them, man. It just I don't see a realm where they had a deal to be made to get that secondary star. I mean, they were like, man, we missed out on Laurie Marketing. That's a blessing <laughs> for y'all. I think I think that would have been a blessing. Laurie Marketing and Porzingis in the front court together sounds disgusting. I would love to see Porzingis take more minutes at the five though. Um, C plus makes sense to me. Um, Denver. Definitely somewhat of a wash year for Denver with Jamal Murray not being back for majority of the season. And I don't expect him to come back and be 100% when he does suit up again. So a B, I, I, I'm sure, I guess we can we can agree on that. They didn't really do much and because they can't really do much. I'm sure when Jamal Murray is 100% healthy, whether that be at the end of the season or at the beginning of next season, they'll be back to contention, I, I believe. Detroit Pistons. Um, last year I laughed at them when they signed all those bigs. I laughed at them when they signed, um, the Plumley. I laughed at them when they signed Jeremy Grant and I was completely wrong on those things. So I'm not going to discredit, um, what they're doing with Kelly Olenek. I think Kelly Olenek is a very solid, very fine player. Even in the end of the last year, he was hooping for Houston. Um, and they got Kay Cunningham. That alone makes probably me put him at a B plus. They didn't lose anything that they saw as valuable. Um, with Mason Plumlee and Wayne Ellison being gone. And they brought back Hami Diallo. They brought back Frank Jackson. And they brought in some additions to help them out. I, I don't think that was a bad offseason. The Warriors is another polarizing offseason. So I'm, it's weird to see that they got him at a B plus. I've seen some people put him in like a C. Because they, they, they're they like, I think we made a video about this. They're like teetering, oh, we're going to be young. But also try to compete, try to contend. Uh, but bringing in Otto Porter. If you can keep Otto Porter healthy, solid. Iggy, eh, you know, Iggy's older now. It's not like you get in 2000 with 15, 16 Iggy or whatever. But, I mean, if, if he can come in and mentor a Jonathan Kaminga, that would be solid. They lost Kelly Oubre, Eric Pasco, and, and Ken Bazemore. But you got Steph Curry back, and you will eventually have Klay Thompson back. Houston. Oh, brother. Houston. Their draft alone makes me want to put them at like a B plus, A minus. These four dudes... Three of them, at the minimum, three of them is going to be studs. And what do I mean by studs? I don't mean that all three of them going to be all-stars, but they're going to play significant roles on teams in the near future. They, I don't know if they hit on all of them, but they had one hell of a draft for me, and that alone makes me put them higher than a B. Uh, Indiana Pacers. Indiana Pacers. Um, Chris Diorte, very good pick, even though he's 74 years old as a rookie. Very good pick, killing the game. Other than that, bro, I, I, I'm going to put them lower. And I'm not saying that they had a bad offseason. They had a disappointing offseason for me because I wanted them boys to go out, sell this guy, sell this guy, and reorchestrate this team for Rick Carlisle. But they believe that Coach Nate Borkren was, was the problem. And now we got Rick Carlisle, who's a good coach. And we saw what he did with us when he coached us last. And we bring our guys back. I hate that. I do. <laughs> I wanted them to make some moves because they, I feel like they got so many players just sitting there. Um... That could be valuable to other teams. Could be good value. Next, we have the Clippers. Clippers is offseason is an A minus. Very interesting. Um, Resign Kawhi Leonard. That was a W, obviously. Um, but he's going to be rehabbing on your dollar, <laughs> which is, I mean, he's a guy like Kawhi Leonard. I guess you're okay with that. Reggie Jackson being back, cool. Nick Batum being back is cool. Um, I, I, I got to see what the Eric Bledsoe deal looks like on the court because you gave up one of your heart and souls of the team um, and you gave up a guy that you traded. I wouldn't say a lot for it, but you, you traded to get them to help you in the playoff run. You traded them away for Eric Bledsoe, who might be marginally better than these guys, maybe just a little bit. You took a flyer on Justice Winslow in a year where you won't have Kawhi. I can see that. Keon Johnson is going to have uh, to learn from Paul George, which is a solid. I, I wouldn't put in that in A-, but I wouldn't put it that much lower than that. Clippers should be back in a year or two. Lakers. Oh, so you like the Clippers offseason more than the Lakers offseason. Mmm. I would, I would reverse these. I mean, it ain't that much. It's, what, a couple... It's one grade higher. But but I, I think the, the Lakers put themselves in, as the favorite to win the West with their offseason, I believe. Um, and we already talked about their offseason, so I don't need to go to... Actually, I don't think I have. So I'm going to save the Lakers' full offseason talk for another video. I would put them higher than this, is what I would say. Higher than a B+. 
Memphis. I'm confused with what Memphis is doing as well. Um, I saw some people speculating that they believe that Jared Jackson Jr. and John Morant are about to be that real of a deal. So we'll sell the players around them that may not fit the timeline or maybe taking shots away from them. Um, which I guess, if that's the case, then sure. But I need to see Jaren be healthy. I need to see Jaren be healthy, man. Jonas Valanciunas is being downgraded to Steven Adams. It's going to be significant. I'm not going to underestimate them because I think I did that the last two years. and both years, they surprised me. But I feel like this team going into this season is worse than they were last year. We'll see, though. We'll see, though. Miami Heat, A+. Plus. Whoa, this is the first A-plus in the video? I think this is the first A-plus he's giving out this video. Kyle Lowry, P.J. Tucker, Markeith Morris, they got some dogs. These are three dogs. They're like, I, I wouldn't want to face this team if we was kickboxing or fighting in general. They got some dogs. They brought back Duncan. They brought back VO on such a small deal that it's like, mwah, it's an icing on the cake. Because even if he suck, you don't you don't have to play him. But if he gives you anything, it's a W. Uh, you Don being back is obviously, that's the reason why they gave him an A+. Plus. I like their offseason a lot. Um, I need to see some more people score the ball. I mean, Kyle Lowry's a great point guard. He not, I mean, he could go out and give you 30s, obviously. But one of the things I saw last year in that playoffs is that they struggled to put the ball in the basket. They had, they struggled to make have shot creators. And Kyle Lowry does help that a bit. A healthy VO could potentially help that. Um, it was a lot of Jimmy Butler's, all I'm saying. And, and a lot of Goran Dragic, who they lost. Um, so we'll see. Milwaukee Bucks. They lost, they lost PJ. That was kind of tough. They lost PJ to a rival, but it is what it is. Bobby Portis being back is a W. I don't have much to say about the Bucks offseason. They they are the, the reigning champions, and they brought back the core. Um, Minnesota made a whole video about it. They didn't do much. They didn't have a lot to work with. They brought in Torian Prince and Patrick Beverly. Sure. Um, oh, a D plus for the Pals. So they brought in Jonas Valanciunas, which I see as an upgrade from um, from Steven Adams. They brought back. They brought in Vontae, and they lost. Lonzo, they brought in some some role players and Jared, uh, Garrett Temple and Tomas Sadoransky and Willie Green is here and they re-signed Josh Hart. I would guess without reading, I would guess that the reason, I, uh, a, a, a polarizing offseason for sure, a polarizing offseason. I read an article for them earlier that was like the next superstar players to request a trade and they had Zion plastered all over that. Was this enough? Was this offseason enough to make Zion stay? Even though he's still on the rookie contract. It's crazy to even say, to think that people are talking about that. I think it's foolish, low-key. Um, but I don't love their offseason. I don't think it's that bad, though. I don't think it's one grade away from an F. I don't think it's the worst offseason of the video so far. But maybe I'm in a minority. Knicks, we already talked about the Knicks. Ooh! I'm in 48 with the Travis Lowe's. I see you, baby. The fragment joints? I like their offseason. We already talked about it. Um, Josh Giddy. Reminds me of I forget who facially he looks like somebody that I can't think of um, They gave it a C minus they brought back Shea, which is a W um, That could turn into more money if they let him play if they let Shea play I'm happy with this offseason if they shut Shea down three quarters of the way through because we want to take even harder I'm gonna be blue because <laughs> I'm drafting Shea this season in fantasy And if I got to release this man into free agency again because you shut him down, I'm gonna be blue Um, They didn't do anything though so I'm just going to keep it as a wash. B- minus for the Orlando Magic. I think it I think it was a blessing that they ended up with Jalen Suggs. I think he's going to be a stud. And that's all that really matters. Next, incomplete because Ben Simmons. Makes sense. We, we already talked about that. Um, B- plus for the Phoenix Suns. I think that bringing in JaVale McGee is huge for them because they didn't have a center um, when it came to the late uh, finals run because they had the injured um, Dario Sarge. And then they didn't trust Jalen Jalen Smith at all. JaVale McGee can soak up 15 to 20 minutes. And once we get to playoffs, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and I think that was one of their biggest holes. They brought in uh, Chris Paul on a hefty deal. But again, they're paying for him to help them. And right now, they're not really worried about what he'll look like in the last year of his deal. Um, Portland, B. We already talked about Portland. Specifically, this Larry Nance pickup was a W. Was this B enough to keep Damian Lillard around is yet to be seen. But I think that the Larry Nance pickup is one of the better pickups of the entire offseason. Um, the Kings got a C+. Plus. I would put it lower. And the only reason I would put it lower is not because who they added or who they lost. Because I think Tristan Thompson helps them. I didn't even realize that they brought in Alex Lynn. They got a lot of centers here, huh? Uh, not because of, of the draft. Not because of who they brought in. But because they have Marvin Bagley 
who's been yapping and taking things out of his bio because he wants out. They already told two years in a row, basically, Buddy Hill, we got a deal on the table for you, but nah, we're going to bring you back. I just think that's going to be a lack of cohesion in that in that locker room. And um, I think that's what would make it lower for me. I, I just don't know how you can say, call Buddy Hill's age and be like, yeah, it looks like you might be going to LA, my boy. And be like, oh, never mind, you're staying in Sacramento. You know what I'm saying? Next. Spurs get a D+. Plus. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with the Spurs. Only thing that I can see is that they're going with the youth movement. Um, it seems like that Young is probably going to get moved on to a third team soon. It seems like the Phoenix Suns are interested, which would be a W of a pickup if that happens. Uh, Doug McDermott's 30 years old. Alfred Gamino was just there because he was salary filler. But they brought in um, uh, uh, Zach Collins. Brent Forbes is back. Josh Primo. It looks like they're going super youth movement. What the heck? How many wins does this team win? Probably not a lot. Um, Toronto. I think my boy Scotty Barnes has got his braces off, so that's a W. It's crazy to think the boy had braces. It lets you know that he's like 18, 19. Um, I don't hate their offseason either. I think they had a pretty solid one. Um, it seems like they're still in the talks with a potential Ben Simmons thing, so we'll see what happens there. Um, Utah Jazz got better, which I think is always a W. Um, you bring back Mike Conley on the deal. Rudy Gay helps. Eric Pasco helps. And Hassan Whiteside is a backup. It's going to be very interesting to see him in Utah. And then the Washington Wizards... I don't think I made a video about the Wizards, but I think this is an adequate grade for the Washington Wizards. And I think we'll talk about that in a future video once we get back to like talking about every single team. All right, man, that's that's the grades for all 30. Some of them I completely agree with. Some of them I completely disagree with. Let me know in the comment section who was too high and who was too low according to Greg Schwartz. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace.